morning, everybody. Uh, before you get started, you need to make sure that you have your materials. So the first thing you need is your textbook, which looks like this. It is located in the corner of the room on the file cabinet next to the windows. Uh, take that, but make sure you return it at the end of class. You also need your eyes and your fingers. Your eyes because we're going to be glancing through the textbook, you're going to be learning about it, and then your fingers to flip through the pages. I know this is cheesy. <laughs> the fingers to flip through the pages, and then the last thing, or almost the last thing, you need a pencil or a pen. If you need a pencil, you need to come get it from me. And you also need this worksheet right here, which you can get from me. This is assignment number three, as you know because you are already on Blackboard. Now, at the end, or during this time, if you need to pause and listen again to something I say, then by all means, do that. That's why I have recorded it for you, so you can do this at your own pace. Okay, so I know you're saying, Ms. Plum, what are we doing? We are doing a walk, what I'm calling a walkthrough lesson where you're going to walk through the first chapter or the first section of our book to see how it's set up. And you say, why do I need to know this? Why, why can't I just start doing some questions or something? Well, first of all, you need to understand how a book is structured so that you can work faster and more efficiently on your work. And over time... We're going to be working with this book a lot. Over time, you will become a pro at these assignments because you will know exactly how the author is working. Okay, so before reading the text, you need to take time to figure out how the author has presented the information. Um, specifically, the author of this book has a consistent organization plan for presenting their information and we're going to discover what that is starting with page four. So if you will open up your book, don't just use this, it might be hard to read. Um, open up your book to page four. You should be on page four now. You want to look at your worksheet that I gave you and you're going to answer these four questions using page four. So we'll help you do this. If you want to try it without me, just go ahead and pause, give it a shot, and then come back and listen. Okay, number one says, what type of information has the author included? If you look at this page, we have a few things. Of course, it says what chapter we're in. It gives us a big title people in government. That title is going to change each time. It gives us a box, and we're going to see this in every chapter, this box, why it's important. We don't want you wasting your time. You need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it, how it can affect you. So that's what this box is for. And then the other type of information, it gives pictures. Pictures are going to help you. Number two, how might you use this information to understand the content of the chapter? If you look at your title, People and Government, that gives a preview. All of this gives a preview of how of what you're going to learn. Number three, how does this introductory page help you gain an overview of what you will learn? Well, if you look down here, it says, around the world, people live under a variety of governments. Are governments necessary? How well do governments serve people? And here's the kicker. Chapter 1 will explain basic forms of government so that you can answer these questions. So now you know an overview of what you're going to learn. You know that you are going to learn about basic forms of government. And lastly, number 4 what does the background photo tell you about the theme of the chapter? Check it out. What do we got here? We have guys dressed in old uniforms. This looks like Revolutionary War to me because it's got the little wigs on. 
and the little old-timey hats. Um, so I'm going to guess that the theme of this chapter is the beginnings of our government, because if you know from 8th grade history, um, the United States started its own government after the Revolutionary War. So each chapter is going to have a page like this. Give it a skim so that you know what kind of things you're going to be learning about. So you don't just go into it blindly. All right. Now I need you to turn to page five in your book. Let's take a notice of how this page is organized. Um, it begins with a reader's guide. Okay. This reader's guide is for you. It, every chapter is going to have your key terms. It's going to have this section called Find Out. It's going to have this section called Understanding Concepts. And it's going to have this little insert down here called a cover story. So let's take a moment and talk about how these features might help you. During this next part, go ahead and go to the second part of your worksheet called Introducing the Section. You're going to do number two through six. Again, if you want to go ahead and try these by yourself, by all means, just pause it and go for it. If you don't want to do it by yourself, by yourself, you need a little help, stay on, listen. If you want to check your answers, come back in a few minutes and listen. Okay, so we said we have key terms. Let's go with number two down here. The key terms are highlighted in the color what. And what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to skim through I'll go to the other pages in a few minutes, but skim through now, page 5, page 6, page 7. And where do you see the word state, nation, nation state? When you look through the chapter, what color are those, um, what color are those words? And write that color here in the blank. Just to make sure that you are correct, the color is blue. Okay, number three, key, you're still working with key terms. In what sequence are the key terms listed at the beginning of the section? So up here, you have state, nation, nation, state, consensus, sovereignty, sovereignty, sorry, government, social contract. What, are, what order are these in? Are they in alphabetical order? Are they in order of importance? Are they in order of how they're listed in the chapter? You tell me, what is the sequence? And... If you skim through, look at, if you go ahead and look at page six, you'll see that it starts with state, and then it goes into nation, and then it goes into nation state. So these are lit sequence in order of where they appear. So that helps you a little bit. All right, the next part over here, find out. This is going to help you with number four. Number four says, why has the author included these questions? So let's look at our questions. What are the four main purposes of government? How do various theories explain the origin of government? Why does the author have this section for you? What's the purpose of this? Why does he have this here? Well, this gives you a preview. This makes you ask a question before you read. When you can see questions before you read, this makes you have goals or purposes for reading the section. Keep these questions in mind as you read and then after you reading, after you read, see if you can answer them. The author has provided these questions as a way for us to monitor our comprehension. It is a road map for you. Would you get on a bus without knowing where your next stop was? I mean, maybe you might, and you could figure it out on the bus, but it would take you longer. If you know ahead of time where you're going, you can figure out the quickest way to get there, and it's more efficient. And reading is the same way. You don't just want to meander through the text not knowing what you're looking for, not knowing your purpose. So that is what this section here is for. Okay, let's go to number five, understanding concepts. Why did the author include these questions about public policy? So, let's go up here. Read through these questions about public policy and ask yourself why did the author include these. So, the question says, which policies of the government make your life better? 
which do you think make life worse? My emphasis on you should help you to answer number five. These questions help the readers, which is you, begin to think about what you, what do you already know, and you can link your own knowledge and experience to the section content. So this is relating the content back to you so that it's more relevant and that you get more of a, um, that you learn more from it that way because it's more relevant and applies to you. Okay, now go to number six, the cover story. Why has the author included this feature at the beginning of each section? So let's look here. Let's read the excerpt together. Teens get the vote. Several states jockeyed today to become the 38th state to ratify the 26th Amendment to the Constitution, which lowers the voting age to 18. Ohio seems to have won the contest. Its legislature voted approval in a rare evening meeting. This surprise move deprived Oklahoma of the honor. Its legislature was not in session. Also thwarted, thwarted means uh, like knocked off to the side, messed up, was North Carolina, which approved the amendment earlier today, but delayed official ratification until tomorrow morning. Proposed by Congress on March 23rd, no other amendment has won such rapid approval. The old record was just over six months in 1804 for the 12th Amendment. So back to our question, why has the author included this feature at the beginning of each section? Guys, what do you think? The author is providing background knowledge and generating interest in reading the section. So he wants you, he or she, the author, they want you to be able to relate to this. It's talking about a teen's first vote. This is going to generate your interest, supposed to, and give you background knowledge so that you don't just go into this section blindly. All right, so make sure this is done. This, you should now have one through six done. Let's move on. Uh, okay, what page or insert features on page six? Just write the name of it down here for 11. Changing population and state power. Number 12, what page or insert feature is on page you have a map you call it United States acquisitions but if you just write map it's okay number 13 what page insert is on page nine. government and you how does this relate to you so number thir uh, number yeah number 13 is nine or not nah, uh, sorry number 13 is government and you number 14 what page insert is on page nine. time for the record just write the title Number 15, last but not least, what is the assessment at the end of the section? And I'm not going to tell you the answer to this. I want to see what you write. Okay? So if you need to do that, go ahead and pause it. Okay, guys. Guess what? If you're finished, turn it in. This is due today you if you were absent you have one week from the date that I posted this and you can see on the website when it is due okay thank you very much tomorrow or the next time I see you we will be actually starting to dive into this textbook we're gonna be answering questions we're gonna be doing some note-taking you're going to be learning skills in this class. On top of getting some content about government, you're going to be doing a lot of skills that you can apply to your future. So, anyway, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.